peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. You're watching The Dean Show. And my next guest is going to give us some advice. We know it's very challenging being a Muslim in today's day and age. There's a lot of temptations. The world is tantalizing you, calling you in, trying to suck the iman out of you. So how does this young brother keep focus? And how is he able to do such wonderful things? So we're going to get some tips and tricks from him so you guys can stay focused. And we can get the agenda together because this world is short. And we don't, want to, we don't want to get sucked in. So we'll be right back with my next guest. It's a surprise here on The D Show. Don't go anywhere. This is The D, The D Show. This is The D, The D Show. This is 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 the Dean the Dean How you doing my brother? Alhamdulillah, thank you. How you been? I'm great. Where you been all my life? Uh, I'm just chilling, man. <laughs> <laughs> you heard me open up the show. Look, time is short, but there are a lot of people struggling out there. Yeah. You follow me? You know, it's, it's, it's sometimes hard enough to just to get up, you know, the people, young kids in the universities, they're being invited to all these frat parties, you know, they're trying to hold on to their identity. Now they see someone like you, you're able to hold on. There's hope now at the end of the tunnel, there's light now. How, how do you do it? Okay, to be honest, um, it's very difficult to do anything alone nowadays, right? You have, the, the main problem right now is peer pressure and friends. All right, so when you have friends who are telling you, all right, come to this party, smoke some weed, do some drugs, this and that. But on the other side of the story, you have friends who are telling you, don't do that. You need that. You need good friends who will tell you, don't go there, who will keep you under, you know, under control. Because, come on, let's face it, we all make mistakes. We all want to try. And that's the problem with, you, uh, with the youth, Eddie. They want to try. They want to be happy. You know, they want to go, they want to smoke weed, they want to do drugs, just because they want, to, they want to feel happy, you know? So I feel like we lost the sense of happiness, and that's a problem with the youth today. They're trying to find happiness, and they, they forget that true happiness comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and comes from, you know, um, from reading Qur'an, tasbih, saying astaghfirullah, and um, yeah, I guess this is one of the main problems that we have today. At what point, because what, everyone has to, people ask me, look, are you a convert to Islam? Look, in, in the sense that, did I convert from not knowing the way of life to knowing the purpose of life? I converted from following the lusts and desires and just, you know, uh, the state of ignorance to the state of now really knowing what the purpose of life is. You've got to make a conscious decision to be a Muslim, right? At what point in your life did you have, did you have a turning point? Did you, like, what point in your life, what happened in your life that had you get serious? Okay. Well, um... One day my family decided to take us back to Gaza City. Right? I'm from Gaza City. And when I went there, I lived there for almost 10 years. And I realized how blessed we are here in North America. Okay? There, there are no opportunities in, in Gaza City. There, everyone is so depressed. Everyone is sad because of the, the problems that they go through over there. So when I came back here, I was like, SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with a life. You know, with opportunities, with, with good friends, with, with, a, with a great country where I can practice freely and where I can, you know, go out there, I'm, I'm safe, I'm, I'm having fun, no problems whatsoever, right? So from that point, I was like, you know what, I need to change. I need to help the community. I want to become a better Muslim, inshallah. This way I can be thankful for all the blessings that I have. And this is a problem that here in the West, we don't really see the amount of blessings that we have. And this is why a lot of people, when they go back to the Middle East or places like Africa, they see poverty. They see how tough life is and how blessed we are. They come back and they become active, they become more religious. So this is something that we are missing today in the West. The uh, sister, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with the ladies first. You know, the guy's like, look, honey, you YOLO, you only yeah. live once. You yeah. know what I mean? Why are you wearing that hijab? Why, why, are, you, why are you, you know, restricting yourself, baby? Come, come with me. Let, let's go for a ride. What, what would you tell this sister? Okay, obviously for the sisters, it's much more difficult. And even though it's much more difficult for her because she's wearing the hijab, she's wearing the hijab, she's, she's going through all these things, she needs to remember that obviously the reward is much greater for her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. Okay, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless her. And the, the other thing when it comes to sisters, I would say is that they, they also need to make sure that 
um, they're not fooled by the by these words, especially when it comes to men. Like you can come to tell a girl some poetry and tell her you are the sun in my world, and you know all, all this you know nonsense, okay? That they don't actually mean. You need to be very careful, man, because guys, when they get what they want, that's it. That's it they're, they're they're out. They're gone. All right. But in, in Islam, they're much more precious. Women are much more sacred than that. And obviously, um, we need to tell the guys to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because kama tadeen to dan. Whatever goes around, comes back around. And if they do that to a sister, someone else is going to come and do that to their sister, to their mother or their daughters. So we tell the men to be careful and fear Allah. That's definitely, that, that is, that's so important because, like you said, look, the, the man is usually out for one thing. And, yeah. and he'll have those sweet words of nothing. Definitely. Right? But how, have you seen now how expensive now this the nikah is, oh right? And zina has become cheap. What are yeah. your comments on this? We actually did a short film about it called The Price of Marriage where one of my friends came to me in real life and he told me, bro, I wanted to get married, but the dowry was $100,000. And then we made a short film about it. A hundred thousand dollars. SubhanAllah, if you're going to make the halal difficult, what am I going to do as a young man? I'm going to go and do the, the haram because the haram is easy. Okay, obviously we're not justifying doing the haram, but at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will blame the parents. They will be held accountable for making it tough for the young men. SubhanAllah. And also the, the, the elders, they didn't live in such a difficult um, environment within a hypersexual um, um, environment where you find everything you know all these posters are everywhere so we tell the parents to obviously please put themselves in in the shoes of their kids because it's everywhere in the school everyone is, is doing all this stuff and it's difficult for them so please you know help them out inshallah we got some more for you we'll be right back here on the Dean show don't go anywhere why don't you want to pray is he not worthy of praise and thanks I mean think about all the blessings that we have of Allah he created you He's the one that feeds you. He's the one that takes care of you. The ability to see. What an unbelievable blessing of Allah. And He loves you. Start fresh today. A new page, a new beginning. And reach out to the one who created you and ask Him for guidance. Islamic terrorism. Misconception. Muslims are terrorists. This is by far the biggest misconception of Islam, given unfairly by stereotyping and the public image that the media gives. Has anyone else noticed how when a specific group of people attack another group of people, it is labeled as a hate crime? But when a Muslim opens fire on anybody, it is quickly regarded as terrorism? Many political dictators and officials or extremist groups use the name of Islam as a strategy to garner followers and attention when many of their practices go against the true basis of Islam. The media has also portrayed Islam as a cult or a club where if you join you become a terrorist and that is now part of your agenda. However, all over the world people practice Islam in the true form and use it as a way of life. There are many verses in the Quran that go against the idea of terrorism. Some of these verses include, Fight the way of Allah, those that fight you, but do not transgress limits for God does not love transgressors. This basically means do not fight except in self-defense, and even in doing so, do not go beyond defense. Another verse states, if they seek peace, then you seek peace. Which means, do not attack people for no reason or kill innocent people. There is nowhere in Islam, whether it be in the Quran or the teachings of Muhammad, that promotes the killing of innocent people. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show, we're at the Mass Ikna, and we're with Muhammad Zia. Ziada. Ziada. You know, I'm sorry, I chop up so many people's names, man. I messed up Yasser Bajaj's name, Kemal al Mekki, and uh, I finally got it right. I'm the, so excuse me. Uh, you, uh, you're not the first, but definitely won't be the last. But uh, tell me now, look, what I want to know is now you did this series also, inspirational series, and have a lot of non-Muslims because the idea is that we want the not yet Muslims, those out there who have, there's so many misconceptions about Islam. Has it affected them? Have you got some feedback from the not yet Muslims? Alhamdulillah, you see, people are bored of... Um, you know, going out there and preaching, okay, the Prophet ﷺ did this and that, even though that's the truth, the Prophet ﷺ did do this and that, the Prophet ﷺ had the best of manners. But when it's more of a visual material, it does affect people even more. So Alhamdulillah, we had so many people who actually commented and sent us messages and said, 
I had no idea that the manners of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was like this. You know, so many people were inspired to read about Islam. And it's amazing to see that, you know, there's actually a huge influence on non-Muslims from this professional, you know, professional um, work and professional projects that's being, you know, um, put together, inshallah, for the Muslims and the non-Muslims. So alhamdulillah, it's been very successful when it comes to preaching to the non-Muslims. Now I said, okay, we'll get to the brothers. We, we briefly gave some advice to the sisters, and it could be challenging, mm -hmm. but you hold on. Like the Prophet said, it'll, it'll come a time where holding on to this deen will be like holding on to a hot piece of coal. Yeah. But we have the great reward of Jannah. Now you have some brothers also, and they're looking at the young ladies, not lowering their gaze. It affects us all. You mentioned the world, hypersexuality, the society that we live in. How about the brothers now that now are getting invites? Every weekend, Johnny, Tommy saying like, man, come with me. I'll pay your drink. I'll pay the gas money. You don't even have to wait in line. I paid off the bouncer. What advice you got for him? All right. That's a good deal, man. <laughs> okay. So when it comes to lowering your gaze, one thing that we notice that it's becoming more difficult for sisters to get married. Why is that? Because guys are getting more picky. Why is that? Because they can't seem to lower their gaze. If they're going and looking everywhere and looking at, you know, different posters and um, supermodels and all these things, their standards increase. And now they want someone who looks like that, that lady in the poster which is very difficult because they've they spent millions on their bodies on plastic surgeries and all that stuff. So brothers become much more picky when it comes to choosing a wife. All right. So this is why the Prophet ﷺ taught us to lower, lower our gaze. Always lower your gaze because this way you'll be satisfied and you'll be happy with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you and you'll focus more about the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bless you with inshallah. Now, some people are like, look, Eddie, why, why are you guys talking about these things? You know, this is something that is, is prevalent in today's society. You got so much, uh, so many things going on out there that's trying to take us away from our deen, right? The black spots on the heart. The more sins we do, obviously, it starts to blacken our hearts. And I like to get, you know, you're a young man. You, alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed you, and you're able to hold on to your deen. We all have struggles. I'm sure you're struggling like many of us are struggling, but it's different when it comes from a young man like yourself. Maybe, uh, you know, older sheikh, we have respect for all of our sheikhs, but sometimes the youth, they identify more with people like yourself. Now, let's go and transition. We're jumping around here and there. Now, you know that there's a lot of misconceptions about Islam in the media. You did one program with the film about terrorism, right? You're on the bus. Is that right? Tell us a little bit about this. For the non-Muslim watching, his Muslim friend got him uh, glued to the, uh, to the TV, but he's like in his, in his mind, he's like, man, those are those Al-Qaeda guys, man. Right? How do you clear this up? Okay, obviously, um, the best way to clear these misconceptions is via good manners. And that's how the Prophet did it. It's very cliche for us to hear that, you know, with good manners, this is how you clear misconceptions, but that's the best way to do it. Are we doing it? That is the question. When we were filming, that scene of um, you know clearing misconceptions about Islam and how you know while you're walking with your beard and your thobe, people start saying, "Oh, go home, you terrorists!" You know, you know it's very um, uh, typical in the states for it to happen. While we were filming, there was a guy who was driving and said, "Go home, you terrorists!" While we were filming, Subhanallah. So um, you get a lot of sisters, especially wearing that who wear the hijab. They say, "I don't know what to do in school." The best way to do it is to prove the media wrong. By your good manners, if they see that you're following the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and you're always smiling, you're always nice, you never lie, do you think they're going to believe the media? They're not. Okay, so the best way is to follow the Prophet Sallallahu and to follow his manners. And trust me, that will clear the misconceptions by themselves. We got to take a break. Don't go anywhere. We're going to come back for our final segment here on the Dean Show with our brother and your brother. Don't go anywhere. Word can't have defects in it, can it? If it is literally God's word, yes. it cannot have defects. I mean, but this was written by men. We yes. know that this is a collection, right? Even if you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospel according to. According to. Right? Um, the, the thing about the Quran, and the biggest, and, and you know, I'll leave you with this, is the biggest thing for me is, if the Quran is exactly what it says it is, and this doesn't matter whether you're Muslim or not, if the Quran is what it says it is, the Quran is literally the word of God delivered via Gabriel to Muhammad, who was an unlettered man who couldn't read or write, right? And he was just told to recite, right? That was the first thing, right? First thing he was told, Absolutely, recite, yes. right? 
Um, so if it is literally the word of God, then that's pretty important to me. And, and before I became Muslim, I said, if this is the word of God, then I'm going to follow it because I'd be stupid not to. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show and we keep it real. We talk about real issues that are chasing, that are affecting the youth, the Muslims and the non-Muslims out there. And now companionship. We know that birds of a feather flock together and we have several hadith and Allah SWT, the creator of the heavens and earth, talks about the importance of having good companionship. How has that affected you now? Did you go through one point, maybe having a bad friend, had to give him up? And how is it now, you're in a circle, making sure that you have good company that will remind you about doing good things? Okay, um, so Alhamdulillah, I, I made sure that I had a couple of my friends who I can go up to and ask them, all right, what do you think? What's your advice? And they're real with me, okay? And even if they see that I'm doing a mistake, they'll tell me, all right, wake up, buddy. What are you doing? Right? So with that being said, obviously there was a point where I didn't have good friends. And you'll be surprised how friends can influence you without you noticing. Okay? You'll be praying five times a day, but these guys, you know, you're in a group that doesn't pray. They, they don't really care. And slowly you'll, you'll start merging into that group without you realizing. And then after a couple of months, you'll be like, wow, I changed. Okay, it is because of the friends. And at the same time, you find so many people, Alhamdulillah, we have a good group of friends. We bring slowly like one person, one person who's not so religious into the group. Okay, we try to take him, you know, let's go out, you know, have some dinner, you know, eat, have a cup of coffee, study together. And slowly you realize that he's changing. Slowly you, you realize now this guy is, mashallah, he starts to say, inshallah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum guys. You know, things that he never used to say before. Um, so I just want to, the, the, the one point that I would send is that don't underestimate it because it is influencing you even if you think it's not. Absolutely, absolutely. Look, I know for myself that when I got to know Islam, the more you study Islam, the more you're convinced on it because it's based on proof and evidence. And it's something that is the natural way. But one thing now after the person makes that declaration that there's nothing worthy of worship except my maker, I'm not going to worship anything in creation but the one who made me and then you hook up with Allah five times a day you dial up directly with the Salah that saved me it definitely you know being conscious of your maker that perfect system how important is that for a Muslim now and how has that impl impacted your life the holding on to the Salah the prayer SubhanAllah just the fact that the Prophet ﷺ taught us that between each Salah all the sins that you do in between each Salah are forgiven that should be an enough reason for you to pray five times a day SubhanAllah when it comes to that, we obviously need to take care of, of our bodies physically and spiritually, okay? It's like a medicine. People need to realize that. It's like a medicine for you to go put your head on the ground and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ taught us that if people knew the edge that they are getting while their head, their forehead is on the ground, they would never get up, subhanAllah. So um, we need we need to uh, when, the, when Allah subhanahu wa taala told us when arad an dhikri fa inna lahu maishatan dunka whoever neglects my dhikr tasbih Quran prayer Allah is gonna give him a miserable life. Okay, it, Allah promised that He's gonna give you a miserable life if you don't do it. And do you think that Allah's promise is gonna go for waste? Subhanallah, it's not. If Allah said this in the Quran, it's gonna happen. So if you're fishing for happiness, you're going after drugs, you're going after weed, all right, and you don't pray. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a problem. Okay, then there's a problem. Obviously, you're trying to find happiness. When Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that told you that happiness is when you put your forehead to the ground, Allah is telling you. So don't come and ask me where is happiness when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling you put your head to the ground. You'll find happiness. Obviously, we're not talking about the diseases of depression and anxiety. That's a different thing. But I'm talking about people who you know who complain a lot about happiness when it's right in front of them. Subhanallah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given to us. Thank you so much for being with us on the Dean Show. We started with peace, we end with peace. And I hear, inshallah, you're going to uh, be in Chicago sometime in the future. Inshallah, inshallah. So maybe soon. we're going to be, I'm putting you on spot. You're going to be maybe my student training Gracie Jiu Jitsu. How's it would that? be a pleasure. Let's do it. Beautiful. Let's do it. Thank you so much. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum. And there you have it. All the struggles that you might be going through, others have gone through it. But you know, when you struggle and strive in the way of your Creator, there's an ultimate reward waiting for you. Jannah, and it's not cheap. You got to work now hard. So if you're having any problems, stop and drop and connect with your Maker and ask Him for the help. And He will definitely 
send that help. So subscribe if you haven't and continue to tune in every week to The Dean Show. Until then, peace be with you. Salam alaikum. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below.